right. Okay. <laughs> Take it away. You got it. Let's see. I was playing around with this. Oh. Okay. How are you guys doing today? Great. Good. Awesome. How many of you, I'm guessing, work pretty much uh, on your own without a big staff? Okay. Great. This is perfect for you. So, do you guys ever feel like you're kind of out on a limb, you're kind of just on your own, and you really just need some help, right? So it kind of reminds me of this story. I used to have this kitten. I know we have some cat people in here, at least one. Any cat, cat people in here? Oh, yay! Um, okay, so I have this kitten, and a friend of mine went out, and I went out for lunch, and the cleaning lady had come to the house and went to lunch. We came back, and I couldn't find my kitten anywhere in the house. And you know cats. They can, like, hide in, in everywhere, but I searched everywhere for little Bentley and he was gone. Couldn't find him anywhere. Turns out that I just figured well the cleaning lady must have left the door open and he was gone. Three days. Couldn't find him anywhere. Thought he was gone forever. Horrible, right? So my friend came over and we, uh, she came over to the house and she said, oh my gosh Sue, she goes, I think I found Bentley. I found him. Mm -hmm. Look up in this tree really, really high up in the tree. He is holding on for dear life. It was in a ball. He was, you could tell he'd probably been up for there were three days. The wind was going, it was cold, and he was like, yeah. like, you know he was on his last leg. It was, it was just horrible. And I'm talking super high, like when it, super high in the tree. All branches, there's no leaves or anything like that in the tree, and we're, and it was one of those, the backyard was connected with other backyards, so it was like, how are we gonna get him? There was no way. So we got in the car and we ran around town going, well, maybe there's like a, somebody that's a, 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 somebody that has a big ladder. And we'll try to just borrow somebody's ladder. Couldn't find anybody. They looked at us like we were crazy. So then guess where we went? Fire the fire department. <laughs> Talk about hilarious. So we're running in there and I'm freaking out. I was like, my kitten, he's stuck in the tree. And we're both looking at him going, can you please come and get my kitten out of the tree? <laughs> and all the firemen, I don't know if you've been in a fire, but they're all kind of coming out going, who are these women? And they're like, oh, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> no, sorry. And we were just devastated. So we ran back home and we're standing there and I'm looking up at Bentley going, I'm sorry, Bentley, I don't know how to get you down. And I just, I was so scared. Have you ever felt like stuck in your business and you're out on this limb just like Bentley and you just, you just need some help, right? So that's what I love to do. I love helping people with their businesses. So we all know. I might tell you what happened. All right, so this is what I, Susie actually said this. We all think success looks like that nice straight line, right? But we know that's not true. So. I'm going to give you some business and marketing tips. These are my favorite tips. Um, my background, and I'm not going to go into my whole entire crazy personal story uh, because we don't have time and I know you're hungry. So here's the thing. I started my first business when I was 22 years old. I went to school to be a teacher, just like my father. And I grew up in the middle of Nebraska, like Mayberry, literally Mayberry, okay? And so when you're back then, years ago, Entrepreneurship wasn't really um, a, a word that anybody was taught. We had to be doctors or a nurse or, we, or a teacher or we took over the family farm. <laughs> That's pretty much our choices back there. So I wanted to become a teacher. And I got my first job as a teacher at Fred Astaire Dance Studio. Believe it or not, yeah, my dad was not very happy about that. But it was fun. I loved to dance. So I started working for Fred Astaire. And I soon noticed something. People wrote a lot of checks and paid a lot of money at, for, for dance lessons. And I also noticed what it did for people. It was amazing. It was amazing what they did for their confidence, for their health. It was just, I started thinking, it just hit me. They're not paying for slow, slow, quick, quick, are they? No, they are paying for how it makes them feel. So one of the other dance instructors and I, I said, we're going back to my college town where there was nothing like this. I learned real fast too, you want to be very unique, right? And I opened my first business at age 22 called Ballroom Reflections Dance Studio. I knew nothing about business. <laughs> I had no clue how to start a business. So I had to figure it out. And I'll, I'm sure most of you know, you get into business, you get all excited, and you open the doors, and there's nobody coming in the doors. <laughs> you have to figure out how to get clients. 
So I learned really fast how to figure out who my client was, exactly who was going to pay me money, where they were, how to go find them with no money. Fast forward, I opened a tutoring business. I had a, it started as a tutoring business out of my house, same thing, with no money. Um, I worked for Fred Astaire Dance, or Fred Astaire, and then I went worked for Sylvan Learning Center later on and moved to California. And again, for 18 years, I had an educational learning center. I grew by myself, went through a divorce, horrible car accident, it's a whole other story. And I built my business basically with no money starting at age 44, I'm 54 now. And so I learned some things about marketing. So do you want to learn how to get a lot of more clients and make a lot more money with very little or no money? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. All right. I'm going to share everything with you and I'm going to go as fast as I can. Okay, first opportunity, my favorite word in the whole entire world is opportunity. Opportunity is very good at hiding. Very good. It can be in the deep, darkest crevices everywhere, right? And if you are not looking for opportunity, you may never find it. But I've seen opportunity staring someone in the right in the face going, I'm right here. And I'm just like, I'm just looking around. People don't notice opportunity right in front of you. You have, however many people are in this room, you have that many opportunities right now. And I'm going to tell you a really quick story because this might get you understanding why your mind always needs to be open to this kind of thing. So, and am I talking too fast? No, I'm no. trying to do that. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to rush through it. Okay, so I, I was married at one, a big part of my personal story, which I, like I said, I'm not going to get into, I was married to a musician. And I had given up my teaching career, my dancing, my whole entire life for him, and everything I did was about him. So, he was a uh, big musician in L.A. He would play for all the big... Um, the famous people's weddings and the after parties and stuff of the Golden Globes. And so every week he would get a phone call that would say, oh, you're playing for this wedding or this event or whatever. And one day I'm just sitting at the computer and I'm just hanging out at home and he gets a phone call and I hear him yapping over in the background. And all of a sudden he comes running in the room and he goes, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this. I'm playing for the Bachelorette Ryan and Trista big wedding. Anybody remember that? Yes. Okay, that was the very first Bachelorette Trista. They made a huge deal out of, about it, right? They, they were going to film the wedding on worldwide TV, all over the t t TV, and I was like, oh my god, it was a huge show. And I watched it. I don't watch that stuff anymore, but I happened to watch it. And immediately I said, oh my gosh, do you know how, does anybody remember how Ryan, if you saw the show, how Ryan lured Trista, what he did? Anybody know? You remember? Poems. And I knew that right away. Oh yeah, poetry. How funny, you're the first one that I ever remember. So I got on the computer and I wrote, looked it up and I found this most gorgeous poem that he had written to her called Something About Her printed it, ran in the recording studio, we had a studio in the house, and I said, you write music to this right now, don't ask any questions, hurry up. Within the next hour, he wrote the absolute most beautiful song, I mean, I'm in tears, going, holy crap, put that on a CD, we're going. And we got in the car, we went to LA, Beverly Hills, went to the, our, his agent, we went to the wedding planner, within minutes, she had Ryan on the phone, long story, very short, Brad Paisley, famous, um, you know, Brad Paisley, famous country artist, surprised Trista at the wedding on international television um, with that song. And I also, my brain, I don't know, it's a marketing thing, I got the domain name, somethingabouther.com, I, I made CDs, I made a way for them to buy the MP, I mean, I went crazy. I think within minutes of him playing it, like 20, 30,000 hits wow. on there. I mean, yeah, it was because of me. Cool, huh? <laughs> so all of a sudden, me being all about my ex-husband, all of a sudden I went, you know what? I did something pretty cool. Really, really built my confidence. So I'm going to give you some more ways. Think about opportunities. So that's my, my tip of the day. Every single one of you, and that's, oh, that's number one. When you... Susie, you mentioned a lot of stuff that this is awesome. So she mentioned how many of you have business cards in a big box or in a drawer. Okay. Here's what people do. How many times have you done this? You go to a networking thing or something like this, and you have this beautiful stack of business cards. Before you get home, you have, you have people calling you, texting you, emailing you, wanting to meet you for coffee, right? And they think they're going to use all those business cards to make connections or sell all those people something. But I don't do that. 
when I had my tutoring center, I, I made it a game. And I'd say, okay, okay, I just met a plumber, and I have a tutoring center. How can a tutoring center and a plumber, tutoring center owner and a plumber, how can they help each other? Well, let's see. I have a lot of kids and families, and they plug up a lot of toilets, right? <laughs> and so the plumber, they need a plumber, and the plumber probably goes on plugs toilets of other families' kids. So I said, here's some free tutoring sessions. Give those to all your clients, free, have fun, and I'm going to do the same thing for you. So I want you to think about that when you're networking this weekend. How can we work together? But I love doing that. Okay, number two. Put your picture on the back, on your front of your business cards, please. It's so important. How many of you are visual learners? Okay, I am very visual. I go home, I have my cards. If I see a card that has no picture, I can't remember what they look like. I, I, there's no connection. I didn't form a relationship with them. Please just do that. <laughs> okay, next one. Email address. Um, make sure that you have a professional email address. Try not to have a Yahoo or a Gmail or anything like that. There's two reasons for that. Well, first of all, it looks professional. Second of all, people will see your website at the end of it, so they'll know to go to your website. Pretty simple stuff, right? Okay, can you see that? I don't know where I'm supposed to stand here. Okay, uh, oh, email list. I had this happen like twice with some people not too long ago. I started getting emails and they're sending it right from their Gmail account and there's no place to unsubscribe. Does anybody get thousands of emails like oh, I do? Gosh, oh yes. good God. I, I, it's terrible. So I, I, I couldn't help it but I had to write to her and say please you know I hate to tell you to unsubscribe but try to get MailChimp or something like that where you put your things in there you need a big unsubscribe button. Who wants people on your list that don't care about what you're saying anyway? You, don't, you want people that care about you. Okay, social media. All right, this is what I love right now. I am now become the Facebook queen, and I'm on Facebook right now. Hey, everybody. Uh, are there lots of people watching, Susan? Can you tell? Two. Yeah, two. Oh, there's usually a lot. So Facebook, being on Facebook, being on social media, make sure that you are doing inspirational content, content that is valuable, things that they can use. I'm telling you, it's changed my entire life is um, doing things like that. Oh, and I guess the big one on here is don't add people to a group without asking them. Anybody get that? Anybody? Is this something that's new to anybody? <laughs> yes, I get added to groups all the time and then I start getting notifications and just kind of be cool about that and just say, is it okay if I add you to the group or uh, group text messages? That's another pet peeve of mine too. <laughs> okay, here's what I wanted to talk about. Live streaming. Who does Facebook Lives? Awesome. Here I can get the um, Facebook Live has actually totally changed my life, especially in the last few months. I made a pact with myself on January 1st to do a Facebook Live every single day. Wow. And uh, I held to it for the most part. There was times where it's 2 in the morning and I went, I forgot, but I do it anyway. So here's the thing. What I'm going to tell you about Facebook Live is please don't sell your stuff. Just do something inspirational. I went to a little new spiritual living church the other day and they gave this awesome, uh, just a wonderful message about, you know, your thoughts. You can have all these thoughts, but you have to take action. And it was just a really cool thing. <coughs> and I just got on Facebook Live and I said, oh my God, I just had to be reminded. You know, we all know this stuff already. But it was such a good reminder. And I had so many people just saying, wow, thank you so much and sharing it and all kinds of things. So when you're doing your Facebook Live, make sure they are inspirational their good content, and have a call, some kind of call to action. Here's like a little bonus tip for this. I was talking to someone the other day, it's like, how do you get people to respond and how to interact on face, any social media, but especially on your Facebook Lives? Facebook, if none of you know, they're not showing your Facebook stuff to very many people, maybe 6%. And if there's no interaction on yours, if there's nobody liking and commenting and stuff, they're not going to show it to anybody. They're just not. So do, here's a trick. When you're doing your Facebook Live, like right now, everybody who's on Facebook Live, if you're watching this live right now, please put a one in the chat box right now. Put a one if you're watching me live right now. And if you are watching the replay, push two. I want to just see who's watching live and who's watching on the replay. So see that? That's going to show some interaction. There's going to be people commenting. It's just a little trick to get people to do that. So Facebook will go, ooh, she's pretty cool. I think I'm going to show her stuff to people. <laughs> so is that helpful? 
Yes. And I just realized I didn't tell you to fill out the forms there. I do have little blanks where you can fill out the information. If you forget, since I, <coughs> I didn't tell you. <laughs> okay. Here's another part that I love to talk about, your website. How many have a website? Okay. How many people's website are making money <laughs> for them? Okay, good. So your goal for a website is you need to actually make money. And you have to make sure that your website speaks to your avatar. Now, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about when I say avatar. Okay, avatar is sort of a fairly new word that's coming out more. It's a representation of your ideal client. So we can say who's your target market, who's your niche, who's your tar uh, most ideal client. We call it an avatar, and that gets even deeper. An avatar is a representation of your most profitable, most profitable, everybody get that? Most profitable client. You want the clients that are actually going to pay money, so you need to figure out who they are. You want to know what they eat for breakfast, where they get up in the morning, which social media platform they're on. Um, how much money they make. You can target anybody through Facebook ads if you know exactly who your avatar is. So, super important. Um, let me give you another a really big example of what I mean by segmenting. Anybody know what segmenting is? Okay. There's one niche market that makes the biggest mistakes with their websites, and it's realtors. Any realtors in here? So I don't, good, okay. <laughs> Here's what happens with realtors. You go to their website, and you see on one side of their page, it says, do you want to sell your house? I'm going to get you the most money for your house. I'm going to get you the more than it's even worth. And on the other side of the page, it says, do you want to buy a house? We're going to get you the best deal, the cheapest deal. What happens when someone goes to that site? They're going to sell their house. They're going, oh, yeah, wait a sec. I'm out of here, right? Vice versa. So trick. Go and segment your audience. A realtor should have two giant buttons on their page. Do you want to buy a house? Click here. Do you want to sell a house? Click here. And then whatever button, then go speak to them and speak in their language. Make sense? Yes. Good? Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, avatar. But going back to the avatar, um, you don't determine who your avatar is. You don't just say, my avatar is this. You need to do research to determine who your avatar actually is. There's tons of resources online. There are Google Keyword Planner, for example, is one. There's something called SEMrush. You can go in, you can just actually go into Google itself and type in some different keywords and things that you think people are searching for, and Google will give you examples. Have you ever tried that? In Google, it gives you other things that you can click on. That's telling you what people are searching for. So you want to figure out who your most profitable avatar, what they're searching for, and you'll figure out who they are. Now, let me give you a quick example, a little bonus one I just thought of right now that I remembered. I have a client who is a grief recovery specialist. So she helps people who are grieving. That's pretty awesome, by the way. There's like 150 different things you can grieve over. One of them, I, I lost my purple pen once, and I was devastated. You can seriously, <laughs> you can seriously <laughs> grieve over a lot of things. So. She's talking and she goes, oh, my avatar is someone who maybe lost a pet or, you know, lost a spouse or, you know, lived a relationship. And I said, are you sure about that? Are you sure that's the person that's going to contact you? I said, don't you think it might be someone's grieving? They're depressed. They're like, they don't know what to do. Don't you think maybe one of their friends might be the one that would call you or their pa a parent? or someone like that, maybe the other person is your avatar that you should market to. Mm -hmm. Think really carefully about that. If you're a coach, a life coach, or somebody that works with people who are depressed or going through something, that person may not be the one looking for help. You know, it might be their friends. So be, that's, this is a really, really, really important thing, is determining who your avatar is. And again, like I said, your most profitable avatar. Now, this is the kind of, obvious, but um, you need to be able to speak their language. It's like the buy the house, the sell a house. They speak completely different languages. And you're going to hear from Susan after lunch. She's a relationship expert. Men and women, hello. I mean, I don't have to say much more than that, right? If your avatar is a woman, you're not going to speak to them in the same language as if your avatar was a man. Now, you can have more than one avatar. So you can have different landing pages on your website that speak to different avatars. So. 
Now I'm going through all this, by the way, pretty fast. Um, I have some programs and th resources and things I can give to you or direct you to to give you more, more on this. And I'm also, um, Susan's going to pass out a minute. If you want to talk to me, I'm offering you a free hour to sit down with you and we can determine who your avatar is. And I can look at your website and give you some, some of my tips, but just to throw that in there. Okay, and I don't have to really go into this because Susie just did the whole thing, which is awesome. You really need to have a book. You absolutely need to have a book. Hello, you need to have a book. <laughs> so um, the first book I ever wrote was actually, someone told me, uh, actually a mastermind at Morgan, he's like, you need to write a book, write a book, write a book. Oh my God. What am I going to write about? Write about what you know. So I wrote tips for finding the right tutoring program for your child. I just made it into an ebook. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I put it up on Amazon, and by the next morning, I was a best selling author. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you, just the ebook made me, oh, people just come up to me. They think I'm a celebrity. They want my autograph. That's amazing. So, you definitely need to do that. And uh, I do some compilation books. I've done some too, where you just pay a nominal fee and you get to write one chapter in the book. And you can actually have your um, picture on it. So, one of the things that we did is this was the last one that just came out. Jennifer Darling's talking tonight. She's one of the authors too. So you can put, I have my picture on the cover and Susan did the same book. So her picture, it's the same book, but she can have her own picture on the cover and her own bio on the back. And it, like, it looks like your book. This is a marketing tool. I don't have to keep going because Susie said it all and thank you. <laughs> so whatever you do with the book, even if you do it yourself, you should totally do that. Okay, <coughs> traffic, all right. Do you know what I mean by traffic with your website? Driving traffic, meaning driving people to your website. You need to do the research first. You have to do that first. You can't just go off on a tangent and think, oh, I'm just gonna put a Facebook ad up. No, you have to do the research to determine who your avatar is, learn how to speak their language, and then you can drive traffic to it. So Facebook is really good. Oh, and make sure on your website, I asked if you wanna make money on your site, make sure you have a call to action. Make sure you have something that says, buy here, put your email address in here, here's your free thing. If you go to my website, which is down here, if you go to suburb.com slash free gifts, it's going to take you to a page. I have a video. Oh my gosh, one minute. And you're going to get some free gifts for me. Okay, I have to give you just a real quick bonus. So You have eight minutes. What? Eight minutes. Oh, he just said I only had one. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to give you a crazy bonus. You need to be unique. So I met Panera Bread the other day. And I came back, uh, I went back to get something to drink, and some ladies started chasing me down. My hair looks like this. Have you seen my back on Instagram? Chase me down. I get people doing that all the time. They're, Can I take a picture of your hair? Oh my gosh, it's amazing. I've never seen anything like that. Do you do it yourself? I get this all the time. That's why I have it in. And long story short, I started talking to her. I said, what do you do? She said, I do origami, and my husband's trying to start a business. And I said, well, that's absolutely what I do. Why don't you have a seat? And I got a customer because of my crazy hair. So um, there's that. The other bonus I'd love to talk to you about, it's something that I just discovered, an absolutely amazing platform where you can keep in touch with your clients and make them super happy. Um, by an app on your phone. And I also have some other cool thing too. So here's what I want you to do on this paper, fill it out. I would love to talk to you for an hour. I also have a sign up sheet that I'll be here now after lunch. And uh, here he comes. I'm gonna keep talking to you, get all the way up here. <laughs> all right, was that helpful you guys? Yes. yes. Yay, Very okay, good. thank, thank you, you so much. Thank You're welcome. You. All right. Thank you so much, Susan. Or Sue. Okay. Sue. <laughs> Sue. Uh, okay, ladies, we are going to take lunch. Um, we should um, we should be back here by 1:15. Uh, we're running a little bit behind schedule. Uh, if you are, if you would like to uh, go to a restaurant and bring it back, bring your food back here, you're more than welcome to do it. If you stay on Castro. Right